Welcome to Bioholic. I'm Olivia once again here with another class on plant hormones. So we have already learned about the auxin, gibberellins and cytokinins previously. I hope you have now clear ideas about those three hormones. But if you have any doubts then you can ask me in the comment section and you can also mail us anytime to our mail id that is provided in the description box i will definitely try to clear all your queries so today we will discuss about the fourth important or major plant hormone that is the ethylene it is very significant plant hormone as it is the only gaseous plant hormone so let's learn about its role in plant growth and development <music> Okay, so let's get introduced about the ethylene. It is an unsaturated hydrocarbon gas acting naturally as a plant hormone. And the chemical formula of ethylene is C2H4 or H2C double bond CH2. And as I said, it is the only gaseous plant hormone. It is colorless and flammable and has a sweet musky odor when it is pure. And the IUPAC name of ethylene is ethene and yes it is the simplest alkene and it is also called as ripening hormone because they have important functions in fruit ripening okay in the structure of ethylene it can be seen that both the carbon atoms share a double bond and the remaining valencies are filled by hydrogen atoms, the four hydrogen atoms. And it is to be noted that the carbon-carbon double bond has a length of about 133.9 pm. And the carbon-hydrogen bond has a length of 108.7 pm. And the angle between the carbon and hydrogen atom from the inner aspect is 121.3 degree clear in 1864 it was discovered that gas leaks from street lights led to stunting of growth twisting of plants and abnormal thickening of stems and in 1901 a russian scientist named dimitri nelsovo showed that the active component was nothing but Ethylene and Sarah Dow discovered that ethylene stimulated abscission in 1917. Interestingly, farmers in Florida would commonly get their crops to ripen in sheds by lighting kerosene lamps, which was originally thought to induce ripening from the heat. But in 1924, Frank E. Denny discovered that it was the molecule ethylene emitted by the kerosene lamps that induced the ripening. Later in 1934, Gain reported that plants synthesize ethylene and in 1935, Crocker proposed that ethylene was the plant hormone responsible for fruit ripening as well as senescence of vegetative tissues. Now moving to the biosynthesis of ethylene. Ethylene is produced from essentially all parts of higher plants including leaves, stems, roots, flowers, fruits, tubers and also by the seeds. Ethylene production is regulated by a variety of developmental and environmental factors. During the life of the plant, ethylene production is induced during certain stages of growth such as germination, ripening of fruits, abscission of leaves and senescence of flowers. Ethylene production can also be induced by a variety of external aspects such as mechanical wounding, environmental stresses and certain chemicals including auxin and other regulators. And ethylene has autocatalytic activity because of which small quantities of ethylene can trigger further release of large quantities of ethylene by the fruit tissues. And Lieberman and Mapson in 1964 first proposed that the amino acid methionine is the precursor of ethylene. And Adams and Young in 1979 established the sequence for the pathway for ethylene biosynthesis in the ripening apples. There are three major steps in the ethylene biosynthesis process. 
as I have told that ethylene is biosynthesized from the amino acid methionine. So in the first step, the methionine is converted into ACE adenosyl L-methionine or SAM that is also called as adomate. The enzyme mate adenosyl transferase triggers this reaction. In the second step, the SAM is converted to 1-aminocyclopropyl-1-carboxylic acid or ACC by the enzyme ACC synthase or ACS. The activity of ACS determines the rate of ethylene production. Therefore, regulation of this enzyme is key for the ethylene biosynthesis. And the final step requires oxygen and involves the action of the enzyme ACC oxidase or ACO, formerly known as the ethylene forming enzyme or EFE. Ethylene biosynthesis can be induced by endogenous or exogenous ethylene. ACC synthesis increases with high levels of oxygen, especially indole acetic acid or IA, and also by the cytokine action. So in the first step, methionine is converted into SAM and here ATP is utilized and as a byproduct we get the inorganic phosphates. SAM synthesis is important for this reaction. So after that in the next step the S adenosyl methionine or SAM is converted into ACC or 1 amino cyclopropen 1 carboxylic acid by the enzyme ACC synthase. And at the last step where oxygen is used here by the action of ACC oxidase finally ethylene is formed. Okay. Actually the ethylene synthesis process is the part of the Young cycle. So, as methionine is used for the ethylene production, so by the young cycle, the methionine can be reproduced to its normal level. You can see here that here the steps inside this red circle is only used for the ethylene synthesis, and after that, it is reversed through the young cycle to produce again the methionine. Okay. Now what is the mechanism of action of ethylene? Ethylene permeates the cell membrane and binds to receptor on the endoplasmic reticulum. And the receptor releases the repressed EIN2. This is the number 5 representing the EIN2. This then activates a signal transduction pathway which activates regulatory genes representing as the number 7 that eventually trigger an ethylene response. Then the activated regulatory genes activates the DNA that produce its mRNA which is then translated into a functional enzyme that is used for ethylene biosynthesis finally. Okay? So is it now clear to you? Now the physiological functions of ethylene. Obviously, ethylene is important for the growth and development of plants. But ethylene inhibits longitudinal growth and stimulates transverse or horizontal growth and swelling of the axis. Secondly, the apical dominance. Ethylene promotes apical dominance and prolongs dormancy of lateral buds. Ethylene is important for the breaking of dormancy. Ethylene breaks the dormancy of buds, seeds and also the storage organs. And most importantly, ethylene plays major role in the fruit ripening. It aids in ripening of climacteric fruits and dehiscence of dry fruits. Climacteric fruits are fleshy fruits which show a sudden sharp rise of respiration rate at the time of ripening. That is known as respiratory climacteric. They are usually transported in green or unripe stage. Ethylene is used to induce artificial ripening of these fruits. For example, the apple, mango, banana, etc. Ethylene also decreases the sensitivity to gravity. Roots become apogeotropic while stems turn positively geotropic. Leaves and flowers undergo drooping. The phenomena is called apinasty. Seedlings develop tight epicotyl hook. Ethylene also hastens the senescence of leaves and flowers. Abscission of various parts like leaves, flowers, fruits is stimulated by ethylene which induces the formation of the hydrolases. Ethylene also promotes rapid elongation of leaf bases and internodes in deep water rice plants. As a result, leaves remain above the water. Ethylene is also very much essential for the root initiation. 
In low concentration, ethylene helps in root initiation, growth of lateral roots and root hairs. This increases the absorption surface of the plant roots. And ethylene stimulates flowering in pineapple and related plants as well as mango, though in other cases the gaseous hormone causes fading of flowers. This helps in synchronizing feed cells. And last but not the least, like auxins and cytokinins, ethylene has a feminizing effect on sex expression. The genetically male plants of cannabis can be induced to produce female flowers in the presence of ethylene. The number of female flowers and hence fruit is enhanced in monoecious plants like cucumber. Moreover, ethylene also plays vital roles in pollination, seed germination and nutritional bending. Now the practical application of ethylene. Obviously ethylene is important for the fruit ripening process. I have already told you that kerosene lamps and hay were previously used for stimulating color development and ripening of some fleshy fruits for example banana, mango, apple and tomato and this effect is due to the ethylene. Ethylene lamps are still now specifically used for this purpose. Similarly as I told the feminizing effect. External supply of very small quantity of ethylene increases the number of female flowers and hence fruits in the cucumber. Third is the sprouting of storage organs. Rhizomes, combs, tubers, seeds for example peanut and other storage organs can be made to sprout early by exposing them to ethylene. And the thinning. Excess flowers and young fruits are thinned with the help of ethylene. For example, cotton, cherry and walnut. It allows better growth of remaining fruits. Now the fun facts about ethylene. Ethylene has been detected in the human exhaled air too. It is found in gut microflora and can lead to production of ethylene oxide which is known to be a genotoxic human carcinogen. And do you know that ethylene was introduced as a gaseous anesthesia in 1923 but after many decades of experience ethylene use was declined as the use of ethylene as an anesthetic has been found to be linked to various cardiac issues. So that's all about ethylene and now it's time for the self-assessment test. Go and check the self-assessment test link in the description box. And if you find this video helpful to some extent, then please share it with your friends. And also, don't forget to like it. And if you are new here, then welcome to Bioholic. This is the world of biology, so don't miss to be a part of this channel. So subscribe our channel and press the bell icon for the future notifications. Next Friday, I am coming with the abscisic acid and till then, stay safe, keep watching Bioholic.